Charles Kennedy and the baton, if you like, being handed over to him by the former leader Paddy Ashdown, who did so much to rebuild uh, Liberal Democrat fortunes after the merger and the breakup demise of the SDP and those Liberals who didn't want, went their own way. And Charlie Kennedy uh, now makes his way to the rostrum. He's kissed by a Lady Maddox, Diana Maddox, and he's now going to speak at the Royal Commonwealth Club. Well, from here on, it's downhill all the way. Um, I don't wish to spoil the atmosphere of the afternoon, but let's not lose sight of the Conservative Party. Why not indeed? They're outdated, they're reactionary, they're divided down the middle on Europe, and they're dominated by narrow-minded Eurosceptics. They offer little that's positive for the future of this country. It is 10 o'clock, the polling stations have closed, and our prediction is that Labour will return to power with yet another landslide an unprecedented achievement in British political history and a result which makes Tony Blair the first Prime Minister to have the chance of serving two full terms in office. If our Moray exit poll is right, Labour will have a majority of 175. The Conservatives would only have about 154 MPs, the Liberal Democrats about 58. We're looking at how well the Lib Dems have been doing, where they've taken on the Tories. These are the 20-odd seats they were aiming at uh, this evening and of course uh, this morning the conservative seats at risk from the Lib Dems let's allocate them to the parties as they've declared and we see they've had uh, three successes uh, in this column Teambridge, Dorset Mid in the southwest and Norfolk North as you were saying held since 1970 by the Tories. Norman Lamb the MP there now let's now allocate them to their parties this is the government side of the house four more years maybe five more years on these benches for these 413 Labour MPs what about the Conservatives, still of course under the leadership of Mr Haig until they replace him? And what a coincidence, exactly the same number of MPs they had after the 1997 election, 165. Now the Liberal Democrats had the best performance in terms of percentage gains over the evening. They will have 53 MPs. sketchy details reaching us here at Sky Centre. Important enough to bring to you though at this early stage, we believe that a plane has crashed into the World Trade Centre in New York. The full horror of what has happened in the United States earlier today is now becoming clearer. This is not a battle between the United States of America and terrorism. We therefore here in Britain stand shoulder to shoulder with our American friends in this hour of tragedy. And we, like them, will not rest until this evil is driven from our world. The deliberate and deadly attacks which were carried out yesterday against our country were more than acts of terror. They were acts of war. I take the threat very seriously. I take the fact that he develops weapons of mass destruction very seriously. Does Iraq possess weapons of mass destruction? I tell you, as I have said on many occasions before, that Iraq has no weapons of mass destruction whatsoever. You produced a dossier last September in which you outlined Iraq's uh, alleged weapons of mass destruction. All the sites in that report were visited by UN inspectors who found no evidence of weapons or no evidence of their having been hidden. I'm sorry, 
It is absolutely clear what has been happening over the past few months, which is, of course, I mean, the moment we mentioned those in our intelligence reports, we were aware of the fact that the Iraqis would then have a significant period of time in which they could conceal these weapons. But, you know, if this were some country that we had no history of this problem with, and this was the first time anyone had ever raised the issue, there might be a point in, in, in what you're saying. It but is absurd in the true. case of... I, I, don't, I don't concede it's true at all. It is absurd well, you're to say... Mike O'Brien said. It is absurd to say in a situation where Iraq has definitely had these weapons, developed them over a long period of time, concealed them, that there is, there is nothing to be suspicious of when they can't even account for the weapons that we know were there when the inspectors left in 1999. I'm totally opposed to anyone having or developing nuclear weapons, but that goes for British and American nuclear weapons as well. This country has lots of nuclear weapons. The United States has nuclear weapons. The United States has dropped nuclear bombs. Don't let us forget that. How can we possibly justify criticizing Iraq for developing nuclear weapons when we're doing so little to get rid of our own? Isn't it incredibly hypocritical? Prime Minister? Um, I, I don't believe so for two reasons. First of all, we're, we're obviously part of a whole lot of agreements to do with um, nuclear weapons. Secondly, Britain has not menaced and used external aggression uh, with these types of weapons against our, our neighbours. And I've been asking these questions for months in Parliament because I'm not persuaded by the case for war. The arguments have been contradictory and inconsistent, and the information has all too often been misleading as well as inconclusive. It's no wonder that people are scared and confused. As somebody who's not actually anti-American, but is deeply worried by this Bush administration, and as someone who is under no illusions about the brutal dictatorship and the appalling regime, which is Saddam Hussein. If the great powers of the world ignore it, then great damage will be done to the world order and the best hope of international justice for everybody in the world. There is no way in all conscience that the Liberal Democrats either could or should support a war, and we will not. Mr. Speaker, upon arrival, are we not better to pursue the course of disarmament on the ground in the presence of weapons inspectors? No matter how sophisticated modern technology, even since the last Gulf War, is it not more precise to have weapons dismantled in the presence of inspectors rather than so-called precision bombing trying to take them out? We have concluded that the UK chose to join the invasion of Iraq before the peaceful options for disarmament had been exhausted. Military action at that time was not a last resort. We have also concluded 
that the judgments about the severity of the threat posed by Iraq's weapons of mass destruction, WMD, were presented with a certainty that was not justified. Despite explicit warnings, the consequences of the invasion were underestimated. The planning and preparations for Iraq after Saddam Hussein were wholly inadequate. I recognize the division felt by many in our country over the war, and in particular, I feel deeply and sincerely in a way that no words can properly convey the grief and suffering of those who lost ones they loved in Iraq, whether members of our armed forces, the armed forces of other nations, or Iraqis. The decisions I made, I have carried with me for 13 years and will do so for the rest of my days. There will not be a day of my life where I do not relive and rethink what happened.